I'm going to do a brief summary which I've called I did 100 website reviews, what I learned will amaze you uh, and it will amaze you. Uh, when you speak to 100 companies very quickly um, about in-depth analysis on their websites uh, you learn a lot. Number one, no one, and I mean no one, understands how Google thinks. And you have to understand how Google thinks to actually do a keyword strategy. Um, you must, because search engine optimization, how you get a good Google ranking, is very much about maths, not words. And we manipulate the maths to increase our chance of coming higher up the rankings. I don't care what Google says, and they will come out regularly and say, we've increased the logarithm, we've complicated things, we've released new things. I ignore all of that. I've done this for 16 years now. It's still maths. Google is not a human being. Google is a computer. And Google uses binary, just like every computer, to analyze websites. Okay? They can change it, they can complicate it, but the fundamental principles must stay the same, which is basic maths. Right, so 100% of everyone I spoke to did not understand that concept. That Google is a computer. It doesn't index words, it indexes sequences of numbers. It's looking for patterns in your web page code, which say, these are the sequence of numbers. To illustrate that very simply, and this is what this is about, simple, not complicated, let's look at this, okay? The words business think to Google are not letters. Okay, I've simplified them. Each letter is a binary number. Let's say for the purpose of this exercise, the number that Google indexes is 275736. That's what business think looks like to Google, okay? Now, if I change the order of the words to think business, it's a completely different search. Completely. 637572. Now, to a human being, they look very similar. But to Google, they're very different. Google's got smarter, and it can recognise similarities in words, and it will say, yeah, thereabouts. But do it. Do the search. Reverse the order of words, or the sequence of words, and you will see a different order of results. Now, that says to me, this rule still applies. Now, what's the implication to you as a business owner? Well, if you don't tell Google what to do, it won't do it. Okay? So, how do I tell Google what to do? This is very simple. Okay? I decide what I want to rank for, and I write it down, and I tell my developer or search engine company to do that. I don't listen to them. It's my business. I speak to my customers all the time. I know what they think, I know the language and terminology they lose, use, okay? Why would you listen to a business advisor or a computer expert or a design expert about what your customers type in? That's insanity. Why would you even listen to Google? You can go to various places like Keyword Planner and Google AdWords and it will suggest keywords. So what? It's telling me what's already there. Where you make big money on the internet is when you isolate a cluster of customers who use a terminology everyone else forgot. You're the winner in the list. Now, keyword strategy. We've established that Google indexes sequences of numbers, not letters, and that it matters. If I talk just about business think, and you talk about business think and think business, and we like to think and have thoughts about business, you're being generic. I'm being specific. I win. Google is the monster it is, because it delivers relevant results very quickly. I used to work in business libraries and we used to use Alta Vista, and this is about 1999. And then we said, Alta Vista will never be beaten. Google destroyed that search engine in about seven days because they released one box, you type in a search, relevant information comes back. That's why Google rules the world, okay? Now, I could tell you that developing a keyword strategy is very complicated and will cost you a lot of money. And some people may tell you that. I'm not going to. Okay. What's a keyword strategy? It's very simple. Okay. I write down what I want to rank for. And the way to think about this is as an analogy. You say to yourself, my target market is A. That would be a certain type of person, age group, um, type, sector, whatever it may be. And you say to yourself, if they were sitting at home in front of Google at 8 o'clock and they were looking for what I sell, what would they type in? 
no science to that. We'll do the science later, you know, the Google checking keywords and traffic. First of all, I want to know what do your customers think? Only you know that. You could ask some. But that's the analogy. They sit down in front of Google and they say, right, there's Google's box blinking at me. What do they type in? And I want you to do that five times. The earliest way of doing keyword strategy is this, and it's the one we still use today, and it's highly effective. Write down five keyword phrases. Phrases. One word searches won't do it anymore. It's hard to influence, it's too competitive. Two word searches, three word searches. That gets you to niche markets. So sit down, write it down a list. One, two, three, four, five. These are the five keyword phrases our business wants to rank on page one for. Okay. Then pick the main one. Now people don't do this, they don't understand the concept of how Google spreads power through a website. Your home page will be most powerful by a factor of about 20 on every single website typically. You can skew it, but you need to know what you're doing to do that. Typically, the home page will be your most powerful, best chance of a Google ranking. You must put your favorite phrase on the home page. And let's say mine is business think, okay? I write down various phrases and I pick one. It's hard to do, because it means you sort of sacrifice the others slightly. You pick one, you say, that's my 80-20. That's the term, if we get to page one of Google, I'll get 80% of the result. Okay, that's it, that's keyword strategy. I now have one. There's five phrases I'd like to rank on Google for high up, and there's one I must rank on Google high up to be successful. Then I give that to my developer, my search engine company, or I use it myself, okay? But that number one phrase and thinking about it and deciding what customers type, that's the critical one. At that point, and only at that point, do I go and optimize a web page. Because I now understand how Google thinks. It thinks in numbers, it thinks in sequences of numbers. And if I have a sequence that is more specific than yours, it says I'm more relevant. That's what the math says. I can only decide what I want to rank for in a sequence of numbers by deciding what keyword strategy I'm using. Okay? Then I go to Google and I change just a very few things. I change what's called the title tag and I change what's called the meta description and I make sure I use it on the page at least once. Now I could make it more complicated than that and it is. There are 400 factors in the Google logarithm plus all of different complexity and you know, I don't want to simplify Google too much, but I do want to say that Google is still a calculator. And if I understand the fundamental maths of how you do relevance, it can only be match the sequence of numbers that are on the page in the right places first. It can only be that. We don't have computers that think like humans yet. We have computers that think like calculators. So, how do I make a small change? Decide the strategy, put those words in the title tag, in the precise order, don't start adding words in the middle, you know, business might be able to think, dilutes it. I want to be specific. It has to be business think. I have to use those words in a sentence, be contextual, use it in a sentence. In the title tag, use it within the meta description, which is the most important line you'll ever write on a website. This is the line that appears in Google results that says, pick me, not them. It's your one line sales pitch, it's like standing in a room with nine competitors and me saying I've got my wallet. That meta description line, which hardly anybody remembers to look at, they let their developer fill it in, is the one that says, pick me, I'm the best. You put your unique selling points in there, but you also put that keyword phrase in there. Then I use it on the page. You have consistency. Google arrives, it sees a sequence of numbers, very specific, it says, oh, it's in the title of this page. That's the point, you can't see that on the page, it's in the, the tab at the top of the browser. It says, wow, in the title, must be about this. In the meta description, which is your one line pitch, describes the whole page. That must be important. And it's doubling up, right? It sees it in the first paragraph of the page itself. It says, right, this page is definitely about that. That's our most important phrase. We move up the rankings, we make more money, we get more traffic. In the 100 website reviews, five days later, a customer ran me back and said, I've just done this, I've just tweaked it. It took me 20 minutes max. He said, I've just moved up to number two on page one. That's in a week without doing anything else. Focus, understand that it uses specific phrases. I can't dilute the numbers. I have to use the words I want in the order I want them. And know what on earth you're trying to do. And that amazes me that 100% of business out there do not understand that Google is a computer, not a human being, and that you can do small things if you think like Google and make big results. 
Okay, I'm Elliot Fort, Business Think, UK TV, and uh, I'll be publishing the second one, which will be about Google Plus pages, the much aligned Google Plus pages, uh, next week. Like and share our page, subscribe, goodbye.